Hi everyone, I'm Yaka from Design by Life and today on Mindset Matters I have the wonderful Elisa Budiglieri and we're talking about self-acceptance today and self-acceptance in a matter of loving yourself more and outlining the journey of what it takes to become more aware of your thoughts about yourself, how do you accept yourself and then from that place, how do you learn to love yourself more? And I met Elisa recently through a mutual friend of ours. And listening to her story, I thought, wow, what a better way to introduce this topic than actually share her story today. So she's here. Hi, Elisa. Hi. How are you? So good to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. You are um, welcome. Elisa is a coach, but I am not going to blab on and introduce you. you. I, I'd like you to introduce yourself. So if you could just tell us a little bit about, about yourself and what you do um, in a few words, in a few sentences. Yeah, so basically I'm a wellness coach, um, life coach, writer and speaker. And my mission in this world through my own journey is to inspire other women to Build an unbreakable bond with themselves so they can manifest the life they deserve. Because, you know, as you mentioned, I have gone through my own journey. And looking back, hindsight is such a beautiful thing. And it's made me realize that the reason why my life seemed to have been, you know, falling apart in front of me was because I didn't have that bond with myself. You know, I didn't have that, that relationship with myself so that I could manifest everything into my life. And that's why now I truly believe that, that's the key. That is the key to having the life that you want. So I love doing that now, you know, through my live events and my online courses and one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that's what I do. I just want to go and spread my message everywhere as much as I possibly can. And it's so beautiful to hear that you are now in a position to serve others and share your story and your life experience from a place of someone else being able to relate to where you are. Because then it just becomes such a more personable experience for a person, right? Yeah. Um, so Definitely. let's take it back all the way to the beginning. And if yeah. you could please share with us where this journey started for you and, and you know, how do you recall the struggles of self-accepting, um, the thoughts around um, self-acceptance? How did they surface? What was the circumstance and, and how, how did you deal with that at that time? Yeah, so taking it right back, like right back to primary school days, I wasn't the thinnest kid. You know, I had that puppy fat that everyone talks about at school and I was clearly still growing into myself as, as a person mm. and I was bullied a lot at school, you know, because I was a little bit chubby and I was a little bit overweight and on top of that, I was a dancer as well and anyone that's in the dancing industry knows that it can be so competitive and it can, it can be really catty at times as well. So then I had that to contend with. And, you know, I was always, always shrinking myself, mm. always shrinking myself to make other people feel comfortable. And as a result, it was just, you know, diminishing my self-worth and my self-confidence to the point that I hit high school and I had absolutely no confidence. You know, I had no love for myself. I didn't have a relationship from, with myself. I was always looking externally for people to love and accept me and to say, you know, Elisa, you're good enough. You can do this. You can do that. You know, and when we look externally, we're always going to be relying on other people to, to make us feel good and to make us feel accepted. So having gone through my journey and, you know, having gone through being bullied at school and feeling like I was always never good enough, I basically went down a really, you know, a real spiral of self-sabotage where I then, you know, started running with my dad actually in year nine and then I started to lose the weight. So then I got all this confidence about me and I started feeling awesome and I was just like, you know what, I'm looking good. Like, I'm, you know, I started getting this confidence back. But looking back now, it was totally coming from a place of fear. You know, this confidence that I have, it wasn't real. It wasn't genuine. It was all fear-based because yeah. from then on, it was like I just went down this, this sabotage, this, this path of self-sabotage. And, you know, I went to enroll myself to become a personal trainer because I, I felt so inspired by my own journey 
that I had managed to, you know, lose the weight and feel good and look good that I thought, you know what, I want to help other people do the same thing. So I did. I went and I became a personal trainer and I did that for a few years of my life. But you know what? That still wasn't good enough. I was like, I still don't feel fulfilled. I still don't feel valued and good enough and accepted. So I then went on a couple of years later, I went on to become a dancer in the clubs. I was a podium, a hip hop dancer in the clubs. And, you know, looking back now, yeah, it was fun, but I know I did that just for acceptance. You know, and I actually, not many people know that about me now. You know, not many people know that I did that. And it's only really people that were around at that time in my life that knew that that's what I was doing. You know, and I wasn't a stripper or anything like that, you know, but it was just on top of the podiums dancing and, and it was all because I wanted people to see me and go, you know what, you're awesome, you're good enough. And even though I had fun doing it, it was still coming from that fear-based place. Mm. And then take it a couple of years after that, I then went on to enroll myself into bodybuilding competition as a fitness model. And this was kind of, you know, I don't regret doing it because I learned so much about myself and I'm so proud of what I achieved doing that. But it was so not beneficial for me and my, you know, my mental state and my confidence. And it was basically just me going, getting up on the stage, going, hey, haters, look at me now. You know what I mean? This is what I look like now and I look awesome. And you know what? I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to put my body through everything that I went through, you know, the the diet, the lack of food, the lack of sleep, the excessive training. And it just became a real, like I said, I was just sabotaging myself, you know, because I was in this competition, I, I would miss out on events, family events, you know, time that you can't get back with family. You know, I would restrict myself from just normal foods that you eat every day, you know, like fruit and things like that. And it just really became I was in really a really dark place to be honest with you you know I was convincing myself that I was happy but inside I was so not happy I was such a broken person inside and I look back and I have so much compassion for that girl because I just think if only you knew what I knew now you know I would just take your hand and go you don't need to do all of this you know you are good enough exactly how you are just go out there and be you because it's just so beautiful to know that that's all you have to do. You just need to be yourself and you will be accepted. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's, it's a very potent message, uh, be yes. you. However, it can be a very, very um, challenging realization when you have yeah. your thoughts and your mind, you know, that chatter in your head yeah. telling you otherwise. Because yes. I think what you described so beautifully was – the result of, of how you felt, so how that actually eventuated in what you did and yeah. what you chose to do. Um, so can you give us some examples for people that, you know, may not realize that they do have these thoughts, that what was going through your head, like what sort of um, negative messages, because clearly they must have been negative and self-destructing yeah. and self-sabotaging, what what were those voices telling you? Like, what were their messages to you? Yep. So the voices were so loud, so loud, and I can even you know still hear them now. You know things like you're not good enough, you you're not thin enough, you're not pretty enough, smart enough, you'll never be successful. You know you you've got to people please all the time to make people happy, and only then you'll be accepted. You have to say yes to people all the time, even if it doesn't sit right with you or even if it's something you don't want to do. Constantly just in that state of proving myself, always proving myself mm. just to be accepted. You know, so if you find that you're, in a, that you're in situations where you're not feeling right, and this is what I always say to people, you know, your truth is always a feeling. It's never a thought. Yeah. So any thoughts that you have, you know, thoughts like you're not good enough, smart enough, that's your inner critic talking to you. That's not you. Yeah. You know, and whenever you have that feeling of, you know, feeling enlightened and excited and happy, that's when you know that you're walking and talking your truth. You know, whatever you're doing is your truth. If something makes you feel that way, 
But if you're feeling restricted and angst and upset about something, then it's most definitely not your truth. And looking back now, like I said to you, I was con- trying to convince myself I was happy, you know, going down the road that I was heading down. But I knew deep down that I wasn't because I didn't feel happy. I was, like I said, I was broken. I was crying inside. And I know that because I felt heavy all the time. I felt yeah. restricted. So it's, it's really taking note of how you feel. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with that more. Yeah. I oftentimes use this little phrase and this is just like snapping myself out of wherever I am, yeah. wherever my thoughts take me sometimes because it happens to all of us all the time. Yeah. No matter how mindful or aware you are, it still will happen, right? Yes. I, I always say to myself, Yaka, does this feel light or does this feel heavy? Yes. And this is something that um, Danielle Laporte um, brings up quite often in her in her interviews and yep. in her podcast. And I think it's such a simple way of checking in with yourself to see yep. where you're at and what is actually going on with you right now. Absolutely. To then be able to step forth and make a decision that will serve you instead of yes. people pleasing, saying yes when you want to say no and so on, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so how I look at this, Elisa, is that it's all great for us to be saying, look out for these signs. But if you're actually not aware that this is happening to you, um, how would you be able to explain that to someone from your own experience? So I'm looking for more of a catalyst or what happened to you in your life where you went, oh my God, you know, what am I doing? And how do I get out of this to go to where I really want to be? So how did that unfold for you? Yeah, so I can actually tell you the exact moment where I kind of had my wake-up call. And it was when I decided, funnily enough, that I wanted to compete again, so a second time. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) I know, I know. right? And I was sitting with my coach at the time and she was putting my diet plan together and I'm just sitting there and – I started feeling really yuck inside and I just thought to myself, this isn't right. You know, you're not meant to be doing this. And I was already a week into my program and I said, stop. I said to her, look, you know what? I can't do this. I said, I'm not going to do this. And it wasn't so much because I didn't want to do it anymore. It was because it's like I had a light bulb moment that I was missing out on life. I was literally missing out on life time with family, time with friends. And it's like everything kind of came back to me in that moment. You know, I was reflecting on things that I missed out on with, with different people or, you know, the, the way that I was feeling just didn't, didn't feel right for me. And that was kind of my wake-up call, you know, going back into something for a second time and then having like this, this gush of, you know, unease come, come over me. And it was in that moment that I listened to my intuition. I listened to it for probably the first time in my life. And I made that decision that, you know what, don't do this again. Because all you need to do to show people you're good enough is, like I said, just go out there and be exactly who you are. You know, and a lot of people may end up in hospital when they have that wake-up call. Yeah. You know, some people may, it, they might go through something really traumatic in their life for them to to actually go, you know what, I need to really make some serious changes here. But it's you don't have to wait to get to that point to make a change. You know, it's just about becoming so, so aware of who you are and your thoughts and your habits on a daily basis because you can't change something you're not aware of. So once you're aware of who you are and what your habits are, then you can go, you know what, I have a choice now. I have a choice to either keep going down this path or I can choose to take a better path for myself. Yeah. And oftentimes it gets worse first, right? It gets um, hard and then it gets better. Yeah. So I I oftentimes encourage people to make the decision even though it might be hard and it might be hard work at first. But it does get easier. Yeah. Um, so I would like to look into a bit more into that journey of your first few steps. And you said you had this awakening. How did you then um, change your life? Like what, what happened after this realization? 
for me, it was realizing that I had become an obsessed control freak. <laughs> like, honestly, when it came to my food, when it came to my exercise, I just became overly obsessed with having control over everything in my life. And like I said, I know it was coming from a fear base because I was like, I don't ever want to get to that point where I feel chubby again and I'm being bullied. Because when you think about it, it all comes back to that first memory. Mm. It always comes back to that first point. And that's what you need to understand and become aware of is where is this hurt coming from? Yeah. You know, where, where, when did this start? When did I create this belief? And then being able to to move past it from there. Fantastic, yeah. And I think it's a it's a really good reminder to to um, dig deep, yes, and not be ashamed of looking back and look at some of those shameful situations that might have happened to you. Because yeah. a lot of what we carry today happened to us um, during our formative years you know in childhood yes and all of that is still in our tissues you know I I go yeah. to yin yoga and and going through those poses and, and stretching your fascia there's so much even muscle memory that's in our yes. tissues in our in our bodies that remembers yes. trauma and releasing yeah. it can be so liberating so I, I guess you know jumping to the next point I I do realize from my point of view, a person who has struggled with limiting beliefs and yes. self-sabotage, and it took me quite a while to get to the point of accepting myself for who I am. Yeah. I know it's a daily practice. You know, I still yeah. sometimes struggle, you know, it's not a linear experience by all means. No. It no. is tough. And days, you know, when you're tired, when you're exhausted, when you might have had a tougher than usual day, they will be your most vulnerable moments where you could slip back into not loving yourself as much as you probably yeah. should, right? So, you know, yoga is one of my go-to tools or practices that cultivates that awareness and cultivates that well-being for me. What is it that you do um, every day as a practice that you recommend and that worked for you and why? Yeah. So just just going off by what you said then, and it's a really important point as well that I think I need to raise, it's people know that they need to change. You know, people can feel and have a sense that something's not right. And the reason why they don't is because they've actually become comfortable feeling uncomfortable. Yes. And then they have this massive identity crisis mm. because they're like, but I can't let go of this. I can't let go of these habits and these thoughts because if I do – who am I then without it? So true. So it's more comfortable for them to stay in that space of the, the known, so to mm. speak. Even though it's self-destructive, it's still comfortable because that's what they're, that's what they're used to. Yep. And stepping out and going, you know what, I'm not going to be this person anymore. I'm going to allow myself to be who I want to be. It's scary. It's <laughs> really, really scary. Oh, yes. Because like I just said, you have that identity crisis of, who am I going to be? And the beautiful thing is, is you can be whoever you choose to be in that moment. You can choose, you can step out and go, I'm going to be who I am and that's whoever I want to be. So in answer to your question just then, something that really, really helped me kind of set in stone, you know, the, the self-love and being able to really cultivate that is Having a daily practice, like you said, it's a daily practice. It is not something that you're just going to wake up one day and go, <laughs> I love myself and that's it for the rest of my life. Yes. You know, I still have days where I wake up and I have to give myself a good kick up the butt and go, you know what, snap out of it, you know, turn inward. So for me, it's about having a practice where I can really, really practice that and fill myself up first mm. before I go out because obviously I have, you know, a lot of people that I serve in this world, being a yeah. coach, I've got to give my time and my, you know, emotion to so many people, which I absolutely love and adore. But mm. I know for me, if I'm not filling myself up before I do that every day, I can't be the best version of me to the people right. that need me in their life. Yeah. So for me, it would be about getting up in the morning mm -hmm. and going and training with my partner at the gym. It's like, it's a ritual now. It is literally a ritual and I love it because mm. getting my body moving in, in you know at the beginning of the day it gets those happy hormones going and it just mm. gives you 
energy for the rest of the day. So that's the first thing I do. Mm-hmm. And then I come home and I'll make myself a really yummy breakfast. And then after that, I'll go and I'll meditate for, you know, however long I feel called for. It might be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour. And then I'll go and have a shower, dry body brush, get myself ready for the day. And then I know once I sit down in front of my computer ready to start the day that I'm feeling full. I can give myself. And when you're overflowing, you can then give yourself to other people. So it's about really cultivating that daily ritual because I know when I have days that I miss it or I don't do it and guilty, I'm not perfect, (laughs) but I have days that I don't do it and I know I can feel the difference because I'm cranky. I'm cranky and I don't feel like myself and my day doesn't flow and that is all part of you know, cultivating that relationship with yourself and knowing that you're worthy enough to feel good every single day. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. And having a morning ritual is actually um, really important. I hear a lot of people really swearing by it, you know, where you have yeah. that structure and you set yourself up for a good day. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I learned this from an ex-boss, actually. Um, he said yeah. to me, Yaka, you always have a choice what you do in the morning in terms of your attitude. You either choose to be positive or you choose to be negative. Yep. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, it really stuck with me because, yep. yes, it is that as well. You, you know, you choose your thoughts in the morning and you choose to set yourself up for the day, but it could be so easily a negative choice. And then that determines or underpins everything you do in the day. Yep. Your decisions, how you um, interact with others. So having a nice, happy morning routine that, you know, um, is not even a choice, it's something that's second nature, then you don't even have to think about it. You don't even have to choose and you just do it and go. Well, I always say to people when they say to me, like, is it really important to have a morning ritual? You know, I hear people talking about morning rituals all the time yeah. and I just I just give them a really simple example. I say, okay, well, tell me this then. Whenever you wake up in the morning, say you look at your phone or you read an email and it's put you in a really crappy mood, tell me you don't find it hard to shake that feeling for the rest of the day. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I do. And it does. It sets your tone for the rest of the day, which is why a morning ritual is so important because you want to make sure you're setting yourself up right every single day because if you're not, it will affect the rest of your day. Yeah, absolutely. So to uh, wrap up today's conversation, Elisa, I um, was wondering whether you have a tip, just one tip that you could give to someone who feels really, really stuck and who feels scared that this is actually a really long journey and they may not be up for it. Like, What would you tell someone who just doesn't even know where to start? It, look, it is a long journey and it can be scary. Like I said, I've been there and I know how it feels. And really it's just about getting honest with yourself because that can sometimes be the hardest thing to do. So if you know that you know you need to make a change or you know that something's not right in your life and you know that you're not feeling really loving towards yourself on a daily basis, first step is just acknowledging that ever so softly, do you know what I mean? Not being hard on yourself, not beating yourself up about it, just saying to yourself and having a real conversation and going, you know what, I'm not happy and I acknowledge that and I'm okay with that and I'm, I now give myself permission to make a change and to seek the help that I need to help, you know, the, the people that can help me. It's, it's about reaching out because... Mm-hmm. A lot of people feel scared too and that first step is always the hardest and we're so stubborn about it. Mm. And I remember when I was in that state, I was in such denial for such a long time that I actually needed help. And the moment I realized was when I was like, you know what, I'm done suffering because it gets boring. It gets boring suffering. So just having a real conversation with yourself and saying, you know what, I'm going to go and find someone that can help me through this. Yes, it's a long journey, but that's what they're there for. They're there to hold your hand. And once you make that first step and you acknowledge it, your whole world will change. Your whole world will change. It's extremely vulnerable, isn't it? Very. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm reaching for some wise words from Brene Brown. Um, She says, there is no courage without vulnerability. 
And I think it takes courage to step out there and accept yourself for who you are and show up as yourself every day authentically without fear of disappointing someone or um, whatever that might be, you know, whatever fear you are struggling with. But doing it and and actually taking a step forth is so important because you don't get results without action, right? No, definitely not. (laughs) So I would encourage everyone who tuned in today and and say a big massive thank you to those that have. And and also just remind you guys that, you know, there's one thing about watching something and absorbing something, and I call it um, personal entertainment. It only becomes (laughs) personal development when you actually do something about it. Yes. So yeah. I hope that Elisa and I inspired you today, more so Elisa. <laughs> but I absolutely loved having you, Elisa, on today on Mindset Matters. And I'm really grateful for you to share your story and have the vulnerability and have the courage to actually uh, be so transparent and open about what unfolded for you. I think a lot of people can relate um, and connect to that story themselves. So thank you so much. And, thank um, you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Where, where can people find you? Can you tell us where your online home yep. is? Yep. So if you head over to www.elisabuddeglary.com, you can see all of you know everything you need to know about me over there, all my um, one-on-one programs that I run, my group coaching programs that I run, and my live events as well. And I'm always over on Facebook. So from there, you'll find a link to my Facebook and I'm, I always communicate with my tribe because I, I really love to connect with them. So hop over there and have a chat. <laughs> Beautiful. And I can attest to that. I am in her tribe and I love the daily <laughs> messages. So thank you for that too. And for any of you guys that uh, would like to reference all these um, links, I will place them onto my blog. So um, this video along with the notes will be available on my blog, which is designedbylife.com.au. And I hope you guys tune in for the next episode next month. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Lisa. (laughs) Thank you.